Howdy, y'all. How you doing today? Well, wasn't that exciting, huh, Kim? <laughs> yeah, it was really exciting and expensive. Just a flashback here a little bit. If you haven't already seen it, go back and check our episode before. I want you to take a look at that boat and then come back and then we're going to talk about it. Quite the adventure. Quite the eye-opening experience. Come on back. The uh, PT-35 is a 1985 35-foot uh, boat, uh, aft cabin, down in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Uh, we're, this is the first part of really looking hard for some boats, and this right. is one of the first ones we found, and we found it on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. We get on the boat, we look, we got our surveyors lined up, we're going to look hard at this boat. They wanted $27,000 for this boat. We didn't take any pictures of the inside or video. Uh, it was rough. We knew it was going to be a so-called project boat, uh, but we didn't have much money at the time, and we knew that we could maybe fix things up as we but go. But he wanted, he wanted 35 for the boat. We got him down to 27. That's right. Well, I think he even started at 39,000. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we got him down. He didn't just ask 27, and that's what we... Right. Whitworth. We looked at this boat what, a couple of times before yeah. we really decided that we were going to uh, pay for a surveyor to come look at it. Again, we're not knowledgeable in boats. We didn't know, really know what was going on. Uh, but we just kind of looked it over, walked it the best we could, and then we brought the professionals in to tell us. We knew yeah, to do no. that. <laughs> what, was it a project or a fixer-upper or what? So, um, a lot of it looked pretty good. I mean, yeah. it had some things, but I mean, the, all the, the deck and everything already had the non-skid stuff on it. I mean, it was really, the deck and everything was really good. It was, it, it was a nice looking boat on the outside. Like yeah. I said, we knew whatever boat we were going to get is going to be fixing up. So anyway, we hired a survey crew out of uh, uh, Panama City and uh, brought them over. I think what their fee was? Seven ninety five. Seven nine, seven ninety five dollars for them to come over and do the... Dockside uh, walk through the uh, sea, trial. sea trial and then the haul out inspection. And then the marina was right across the way at the boat yard where we could pull the boat out, and that was going to be like another 400 bucks to have the boat pulled out. Six. Uh, 600 bucks mm -hmm. to pull that out. So, if why we're doing this video is to let some of y'all know that are watching these videos, if you're thinking about getting a boat like this, this is what you're going to have to do. Or you can just take a shot in the dark and save the money. So we just spent basically rounded up to $800 plus $600 for a survey to go well, look at this boat. Well, actually, he gave us a deal on it when there was something wrong with the boat. Right. He gave us a discount. But, but I'm we just also telling had you, to pay gas. Get... And we also had to pay for room. We also had to pay for our meals. I mean, it was, it added up. Yep. Um, so. But. If you're looking at a boat and want to buy a boat, you're going to have to pay $800 plus or minus for a surveyor to come look at it. You're going to have to pay to have it hauled out to have it inspected. That could be around the $600 mark. They go by f uh, how many uh, feet uh, your boat uh, well, I think is. it depends on where you are and the location right. and Some where are they cheaper, are. some are expensive, right. but that's a roundabout also, number. They also do it mostly Monday through Friday, so you have to take off of work to go do this. That's right. Not many uh, and that was boat very yards hard are open to on do that. Not many boat yards are open on Saturdays and Sundays. Your surveyor can come out and, and usually work, but getting the boat hauled out could be difficult. And again, it just depends on your time, but that's something that you need to look at. And later down the road, when we get through all these uh, videos and, and, and get the boat and everything, we're going to do a recap of everything uh, and go through it. So, get the surveyor on the boat. We're down there talking to uh, one of the surveyors. Uh, Captain Rick. Captain Rick was his name. Excellent fella. He's out of Pensacola or uh, Panama City. So we're talking to him, going through a few things, swapping stories and stuff like that. 
while his uh, uh, partner was up doing the top side. So he's up there doing his thing, checking the fly bridge and the railings and everything that needs to be checked out on the outside of the boat. And uh, he comes down uh, from the top side of the boat and he looks at Kim and us. <laughs> He goes into the engine room and he looks at yeah, us. We, op we open the hatch up and he steps down in the in in, in the, the engine room, which is below the uh, in the main salon to take the hatches out. And he looks in the engine room. Then he looks back up at us. And he says, "What's he say?" He says, "Can I ask y'all a personal question?" And we were like, "Well, sure." And he says, "Are y'all millionaires?" We were like, "No." He said, "Well, you need to walk now." Get out of here. Leave this boat. <laughs> he said, He's gonna, this is going to take a lot of money to fix this boat up. Um, he said it's going to be at least $10,000 to Just do the, the electrical. Mm -hmm. On the electrical. Uh, and we didn't even go into the engine part because he hadn't even stopped. It was $10,000 just above. Uh, up on the flybridge and everything on the outside of the boat. We hadn't even got done on the inside of the boat. Now again, we knew we were going to have to add some stuff and do some stuff, but when you right. get in on wiring on a boat and, and 12 volt and, and, and AC, it gets pretty complicated if you don't have the right wire on the right thing and have uh, good conductivity and a whole bunch of other stuff that some of y'all can comment down below what needs to happen on a boat. Polarity Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all comment down there. Polarity's one big thing on a boat, of making sure the right wire is hooked to the right thing on a 12 volt. But anyway, so they just looked at us, so they just... Uh, felt sorry for us and gave us a discount. Sorry for us. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let's call it a loss and leave. <laughs> they, they said, and, they just, and we just said, all right, well, we're just going to shut it down now, because if it's going to be 10000 there, it hadn't even gone through the motors or anything in the engine room, aft cabin, the galley, uh, the forward uh, controls uh, down below, you know, the V-berth, anything, and hadn't even hauled it out of the water yet. So Lord knows what could have happened then. And he did find a uh, issue with uh, the port side uh, gunnel oh. that they had a storm about three weeks before we got there, and evidently the boat got slammed up pretty hard on the, on the pier uh, with one of the posts prior to us seeing it the first time to the second time. Yeah, and he said there was a crack, and I don't know how far it goes down, but it goes down farther than you want. So, we immediately called it quits on this uh, PT-35, <laughs> wrote him a check, so we spent... Uh, $600 he charged us. $600 there, we uh, hotel room and everything, so and driving over there. $1,000. So we spent $1,000 on a boat. That we didn't even get. That we... Didn't even haven't even owned. So at this point of this boat search, and this is the second time that we went there, so we're in a thousand dollars on a boat and don't even own one yet. Yeah, and then we also stayed in a hotel the first time we went too. That's what I'm saying. So, so I mean, you know, I mean, we didn't we didn't just go. One not that time we don't enjoy Fall Water oh, Beach or Destin. We love it. We, then we need a reason to go. We'll go. But this is just what you're going to have to come up against uh, when you're out looking for a boat. Some are project boats, some are cleanup boats. You just put a little elbow grease and you're good to go. And other ones you're going to have to update with electronics and stuff like that. This one, while it looked good, it was a disaster waiting to happen. If you wouldn't have got a survey on this boat and we would have bought this boat, it would have been a bad we situation. Would, ain't no telling how much money we would have had to put in it to get this boat where it needed to be. And even if you went through all that stuff, you never ever would have got any of your money back out of it. So It was a cool boat, though. Yep. It really was. But it had a lot of character. I love the inside of that boat. I mean, yep. it really was a nice boat. Yep. It really was. And, I mean, not, I mean, Mr. Tony, the guy that owned the boat, we got to be pretty good friends with him. He was, he was losing his eyesight and everything, so he couldn't really see a lot of the things that was going on with the boat and everything. And he was like, what would you say, 80? He was 80-something, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was up there at age. He was I mean, getting up there. The wife the, wouldn't go out with him anymore. Yeah. And she was scared that he wouldn't be on the boat anymore. And it sat be, there too long. Yeah, it could have been a really, really, it was, it was just a waste to see the boat go, go yeah. to this There's shape. another one of those was. boats you'll see them all the time at the marinas. They call them dock queens. They just sit there and ruin and wait for somebody to come by that's not smart enough to walk away from a boat or 
needs a challenge and wants to fix something up and go. But he went down there every day playing with that boat and tinkering with it. I'm surprised he really didn't fall off and something happened to him. I mean, it was really, it was really, I mean, he, he really had his heart and soul in that boat. It was really sad. But anyway, that was our first uh, survey and our first boat we really looked hard at. And our first we, thousand. Our first thousand, yeah, <laughs> our first boat bucks, as they call it, a boat break. Break out another thousand. Yeah, uh, we broke out the first thousand. First thousand, and we just. But yeah. that thousand dollars we spent was worth every penny of it. Saved us a lot of money, and that's the way we looked at it at that time. That yeah. And the, the same what the surveyor says, and this may be the best thousand dollars you've ever spent. And that's saved true. us a lot of heartache. But anyway, that's where we're at on boat number one that we looked at. Boat number two is going to be coming up shortly. So please, if you uh, thinking about buying a boat or, or thinking about even buying an RV or anything, it's going to be the same process of anything that you buy of going through and making sure you're intelligent and know what you're getting before you go ahead and put out your hard-earned money to get Right. Never, ever, ever buy a boat without getting a survey, in my opinion. Yeah, my opinion, never. too. I would never do it. But anyway... We hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Please, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, we got uh, our, our uh, uh, Twitter uh, page up and going, just started out. We got an Instagram just starting out. We're learning, so be patient with us. Be gentle. Be gentle. Please comment <laughs> down below. Uh, we love to hear all y'all's comments. We love the encouragement that we're getting. Uh, but uh, boat number two is going to be coming up. Can't wait to show you. Please come back and look at boat number two of what happens with boat number two. It's going to be very interesting. <laughs> and just remember. Stop the madness. Start the adventure. And it's one expensive adventure right now. <laughs> hey, some days here. <laughs>